below. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this lovely dressing table. As usual you'll find the cutting list in the description box below. So let's get started. So begin by cutting the pieces needed for the main body of the dressing table and we'll cut the pieces needed for the drawers later and I know you all know this by now but I like to construct the piece first and then re-measure the drawer opening so we can get a really accurate measurement for the drawers. So once you've cut the pieces sand along the edges and then sand the surface of each piece just using your 500 grade sandpaper and then in the cutting list you'll see that for a few of the pieces I've advised to cut them in the direction of the shortest edge and that's just because the shortest edge of the wood is going to be facing forwards and the edge of the wood that runs in the direction of the grain is always going to look neater than the direction that doesn't run in the direction of the grain that always looks a little bit bobbly and you can actually see the inside of the wood so you're always going to get a nicer finish if you cut so that the grain is at the front of your piece so that's just why I've advised that OK, so let's get started. So I've got some glue here on a piece of card and I'm going to use a cocktail stick to apply it. And I've got a spare cocktail stick here to remove any excess glue from along the joins. And we're going to begin by gluing the side pieces between each pair of legs. And the side pieces are the pieces cut in the direction of the grain. So all of your other sort of pieces of similar size are cut against the direction of the grain so that's how to identify them but every if ever you get in a bit of a muddle you know, having lots of sort of similar sized pieces on your work surface then just write the name of the piece onto it lightly in pencil and that can then be erased before we apply the paint so begin by applying glue along each edge on your work surface and then you want to attach it so it's flush with the top of the leg so press it against the leg like that attach the other leg as well and then bring in your spare piece of strip wood doesn't matter what thickness it is and then push all of those pieces up against it Make sure as well that your side piece is flat against your work surface. Want a nice flush edge along the top and along the back of the piece. Come around that way so I'm not getting my hands in your way. I'm pushing the legs against the side piece as well. And when you do that, make sure you're not tilting them inwards. You can tend to do that sometimes. Make sure you're keeping them flat and pushing them in at the same time. You can then just push that along your work surface and that can be left to dry. And then you can do the same thing again with the remaining side piece and legs. We're almost ready to begin construction but before we do we're going to do pencil lines on the top piece and the back piece for placement of the internal divides and so we don't have to do those pencil lines twice we're going to join them together so make sure your edges are flush and then you can just use a tiny little bit of masking tape at each end just to secure those and then we only have to do the one line and the line, all the lines, are going to be 23 millimetres, and that's 29 30 seconds of an inch from each end of the wood. So 23 millimetres, do a little pencil mark there, and there, 29 30 seconds of an inch, and the same from the other end. 23 millimetres, 29 30 seconds of an inch. Like that. And then turn the piece and join those up and place your rule just below the pencil marks and that will allow for the thickness of your pencil nib even if it is a nice sharp one same there and then you can remove the tape so bring in one of your side pieces and place it face down so that the flat edge is facing upward and you've got the sort of indentation on the other side there 
and apply glue along the short edge of your back piece. And then we're going to stick this to the front edge of the back leg, so just behind the join between the two pieces. Make sure you've got a nice flush line along the top there. I think I may need to come down just a tiny bit. And you've got time to jiggle if you need to before the glue begins to take. So give that a good press down. I'll just and pick that up and show you. So in the back piece there is sitting just towards the front edge of that back leg. So we've got that little lip at the back as we've got here on the side. Just get rid of that little bit of excess glue there. Be careful when you do that not to knock anything out of place. And then you can bring in your top piece and that's going to be positioned on the inside edge of those pieces so that the pencil lines are on the inside. So apply glue to a short and a long edge. And then position the piece so it's flush with the top of that side piece. That top piece into, into place first. I'm using my finger to make sure I've got a nice flush line along there. And then you can bring this back piece in to meet it and that will square the whole thing up. So if I turn it round so you should have a nice flush edge along the side piece there and then press the pieces together so that you're squaring it up. And then lay the piece down onto its top like that and bring in one of your internal sides and this is going to sit on the inside edge of the pencil line, so closer to the side piece. So again, apply glue to a short and a long edge. And then position it so you can just see that pencil line. Use the one on the back piece as well to make sure that it's upright. And then push it right into that back corner. Have a look from the front, make sure you're happy that it's sitting straight and then apply glue along the top of the internal side. And then bring in one of your left or right hand bottom pieces, which is the wider of the pieces. And we're going to apply glue again along a short and a long edge. And then this is going to sit on top of that internal side, forgetting what I'm calling the pieces. And so that it's flush with the bottom of the side piece and the back piece there. So push that into place, push it right into the corner. Make sure you've got a nice flush line there and along the back as well and then press it down on top of that internal side. Give that a good firm press into place. And have a look from the front. Make sure you're happy with how that's sitting. And then that piece can be put to one side for a moment. And you want to bring in the central draw front. And I'm going to shape this piece but you could just leave it straight if you wanted and it's going to be acting like a bit of a false draw which will sit in the middle there. I'm going to be putting a little draw knob on it as well but I am actually going to shape the bottom of mine. I think it just makes it look prettier. So to shape the piece, cut a piece of paper to the same size as the piece of wood and fold it in half like so. And we're just actually going to create a template for the shape. So bring in your pencil and I like mine to dip down at the bottom. I think it just looks nicer than sort of going up in the middle. 
it just looks more pleasing to the eye if you have it sort of coming down in the middle I meant to say rather than the bottom so do like a little curve up like that and then you can put a little bit of a, a shape in there if you like and then come down into the other corner so try and keep it simple because we've now got to cut this out of the wood so then cut out your template and if you've watched my tutorials you would have seen me shaping wood before and it's fairly easy and it just adds a really nice detail to a piece once you know how to do this it's something you can add to lots of different pieces I'll just cut that little bit out as well open out your template like that and then you can copy that onto your piece of wood And I think what I'm actually going to do is take my curves up a little bit higher just so that those edges of the wood are higher than the centre. So make any little adjustments at this stage. Like that. And then bring in your scribe tool. And a scribe is a tool rather like a pencil with a nice sharp pointed tip and I'm going to use that just to score that shape into the wood so we're not trying to cut through with it we're just using it like a pencil just to make the score into the wood and I just find that by doing this first it helps to keep the blade of your knife on track and just little strokes like that and then you can bring in your craft knife it helps to have a new blade in your knife when you're doing things like this and then you can go over that score just with the very tip of the knife and if pieces start to come free that's okay at this stage you just want to try and get that line a little bit deeper into the wood be really careful of your fingers when you're doing this just always think where are your fingers in, in relation to the blade and make sure that they're always away from the sharp edge of the blade so that's beginning to cut through now but what you can do is score oops, score lines into that piece of wood to pull it away and take it away in sections and my whole piece came away there which is which sometimes can split the wood but I was lucky so that came away quite nicely but sometimes it does help to do it in sections so that it doesn't actually pull away any of the wood that you want to keep. Again, just go through using the tip of the knife. supporting that so that it didn't come away in one piece again that's why I done on my split wood and just use the tip of your knife to tidy it up if there are any sort of bits of wood left in there take that piece off there and we are going to be sanding it so just take off any really rough edges And then bring in a piece of 500 grade sandpaper and you can sort of make it into a little bit of a curve like that so you can work in between the curves. So 
So just go along the cut edge first. And you can do a little bit of reshaping at this stage as well. So I might just bring those corners up a little bit. Get rid of that sort of sharp edge there. And on the bottom of the wood. Try and keep your pattern symmetrical as well. I've got a sort of shallower curve over this side, so I'm just trying to shape it to make it more look, look more like the other side. You can wrap the sandpaper around a pencil as well. That helps to sand nice curves. So you want to tidy it up. The other thing you don't want to do is do too much as otherwise you're going to take away any little shapes that you've got in there. So I'm quite happy with that now. And we can now glue this into place. So apply glue to a short and a long edge. Again, with this piece, you might just want to make a slightly narrower piece. So you could maybe cut it to half the height. So you've just got like a small, thinner draw in there, if you see what I mean. Make sure that it's right along the front edge of the piece. So flush with that top and with the side the internal side piece there and we can sand this along the front before we continue and that's why I didn't attach the um, draw knob to this central piece at this stage so that I can give it a good sand and then we'll drill the hole and attach the little knob at a later step and again you don't have to attach a, a draw knob but I saw one with a false front like this and a little draw knob and I just thought it was a really clever idea. Makes it look like you've got a nice little shaped drawer in there. So we're now ready to attach the next internal side piece and that will sit again along that pencil line and attach to the side of our moulding. So first of all apply glue to the side of the moulding. then to a long and a short edge of your internal side. And then sit that into place again using that pencil line as your guide. So you should just be able to see the pencil line on this side of the piece of wood. Make sure the moulding is sitting flat against the front edge. You may need to just pull that out a little bit. Make sure the side's pushed right into the corner, the back corner. Like that. Get that bit of glue. You shouldn't use your fingers to do that. And you've got time to jiggle things about if you need to. And now we can attach the remaining bottom. So apply glue again along the top of that internal side. Cocktail stick stuck to my clean cocktail stick now. Like that. And then just along the back edge of the remaining piece like that and then that will sit on top of that internal side and flush along the back there okay make sure you've got a flush inside edge in there and you just need to keep it upright with that back piece 
good. Until we've got the side on, it won't be very sturdy. So just try and keep it flush along there. Press it down on the top of the internal side. Pull that up a little bit. Have a look from the front. Make sure you're happy with where everything's sitting. And now we can attach the remaining side. So apply glue to the edges. Then bring in your side piece. Make sure you're attaching it with the flat edge down. And you want to make sure you've got that nice flush line along the top and along the front. Okay, use your finger to make sure you've got a nice flush edge. And you should have a nice flush edge along the bottom there as well. So you may just need to poke your finger into the drawer and pull the bottom bit down so that you're flush along there. Again, check you've got a nice flush edge along the front. Again, you've got time to jiggle if you need to. Pull that back a tiny, tiny bit. Give that a gentle press and then I just want to grab some masking tape and I'm going to put the first piece over the side that way. Pull it nice and tight but careful not to knock anything out of place. Put that in there and then I want to put a piece over the other way as well. Like that. Again Give it a nice tight pull. Down like that. And that piece can be left to dry. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove your tape. And then what you can do is actually sand it face down on your sandpaper, on your work surface. Hold on to it nice and firmly and then just go round in small circular motions. And I have actually already done this piece, but what that will then give you is a nice flush front edge. And it really does neaten it off and it can make all the difference to a piece. You can also do that on the top of the dressing table. Again, in small circular motions and again I've already done this piece. And then that will give you a nice flat top to then attach our dressing table top to. So we're going to bevel one long edge, and both short edges as of each of these pieces and the thicker piece from the 2.5 millimeter sheet wood with 3 30 seconds of an inch we're going to do on the sandpaper on our work surface. So pop that piece to one side, hold the piece at a 45 degree angle and sweep it towards you keeping it at that angle. It's just starting to bevel off, so keep going until you've got a nice, sharp, even bevel. Like that. And then do the same thing at each end. And then you can finish that piece off in your hand with a piece of 500 grade sandpaper, just to tidy up the edges. When you're beveling a thinner piece of wood, such as the 0.8 sheet wood, one thirty second of an inch. It's always better to do it in your hand rather than against your sheet of sandpaper. Just because the wood is so thin, it's just likely to split. So hold the piece in your hand and support it as high up as you can with your finger, and then just sweep the paper along at a 45 degree angle. see that there but that's just starting to bevel off again keep going until you've got a nice sharp bevel so we're now going to glue the dressing table top molding to the top and we want them so that they're both bevel sides facing upwards and your thinner molding should sit just nicely inside the sort of beveled area of the dressing table top. So get that lined up and don't worry if you've got a little bit of an overhang at the back because we can trim that off once the pieces have dried together. And I've got my clamps 
here ready to secure the pieces. So begin by applying the glue to the back of the moulding on the thinner piece of wood. So make sure you spread it right along the edges and line it up on the inside edge of the bevel so you've got that sort of lovely corner going up like that on both sides. Same along the front edge there, so that the bevels are just sort of blending into one. And of course you can just use the thicker piece of wood if you like, but I always think adding the moulding adds a nice little detail, because you've got that lovely lip around the outside edge then. So I'm just pressing them together and squeezing out any excess glue. So if anything does come out, just use your cocktail stick to remove it. I didn't put too much on, so there's not too much there. And as you can see, as the glue is starting to dry, see how the moulding is trying to lift away from the thicker piece of wood. And that's why it's always important to secure pieces together whilst the glue is drying. And I really like these clamps with the orange tips. They're lovely and tight. So I'm starting by putting one at each corner. And then just fit around as many as you can. Even if it looks a little bit overkill. That way you won't get any gap in around the edges. And that piece can then be left to dry. So whilst that's drying, we can construct the drawers. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my tutorials, you'll know that I always advise to build the unit first and then measure the drawer openings and cut the pieces accordingly. Now, as usual, I've given the measurements in the cutting list for the drawers, but do just use those as a guide. And once we've got to this stage, measure your drawer opening. So height, width and depth. And then you want to just deduct half a millimetre, if that, from each of those measurements, which will help the drawer to slide in and out more smoothly. And then to actually construct the drawers, begin by applying glue along each long edge of the base piece. Pop that back down and attach the sides, making sure you've got a nice flush edge along the front and back. That one as well. I'm just going to grab my spare strip wood again and you can actually use that to press those pieces into place and again that way you'll get in a sort of even pressure all the way along. And then just very carefully slide that piece along so that it's not stuck to your work surface and that can be left to dry for a few minutes and then you can construct the other drawer in the same way. We'll start the construction. Bring in those strips again. Give them a good firm press. Don't worry if the sides sort of try to curl inwards like that because we'll straighten them up once we attach the front and back pieces. So slide that along again. And then I'll just give that another sort of half a minute or so. And then once that piece is dried enough so that you can handle it without it falling apart, apply glue to the front and back edges. Pop that piece back down and then you can at attach the front and back pieces. Pull the sides out to meet the edges of the piece. Give that a firm press. That piece as well like that. Don't worry if you've got anything overhanging as I have there because we'll be sanding this once the glue is completely dried into a nice flush shape. 
and you can pick it up and sort of manoeuvre it around so that you've got nice flush edges. Give it a good firm press and then pop that to one side to dry and then complete your remaining drawer. So whilst the drawers are drying we can attach our top piece. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry remove the clamps and then if you've got anything overhanging along that back straight edge of the piece just trim that away using your craft knife and I've done mine I just had a little bit overhanging at one end and then apply glue to the top of the dressing table. Make sure you get it onto the legs and right along the edges as well. And then we're going to attach this piece so that the moulding is on the bottom and so that the back edge is flush with the back of the legs. So not with the back of the dressing table but sat right back to the legs. And so that you've got an even overhang at each side and that should be the thickness of your bevel. So get that lined up at the back. You've got time to jiggle it around if you need to. Just getting that nice line along the front there as well. And then you can see the corner of that bevel just comes up nicely with the corner of the leg there. And you've got that nice line. So carefully press that into place. Don't put too much pressure on it because we've only got those thin legs down there. You can get in and press underneath. Have a quick look round for any excess glue. Again, I didn't use too much. I haven't got a lot of excess glue. There's a little bit at the back there, having said that. Get rid of that. Always easier to get rid of the glue when it's at this tacky stage, rather than leaving it to completely dry. Now I'm just going to grab some masking tape. I'm going to put a piece right across dressing table like that across the back of the piece. Tuck it underneath and then I'm going to put a piece across the front as well. And then have a look around the back and if you've got any lifting along the back edge there you can put a piece like I've got there, if you see, I can still press that down. I'm going to put a piece over the back as well. Otherwise it sort of tends to sit up and you've always got that gap at the back. So pull that nice and tightly over there. I'll do the same at the other side, just to keep it all even. And I'm also going to put a bit in the centre at the front as well, just because I won't be able to get any clamps in there. Be really careful when you're doing that, because you don't want to crack your moulding. And then I'm going to get a couple of clamps in each drawer opening, if I can. See if I can just squeeze another one in each opening. That will really hold that top piece in place then. Yep, just fits. And one there as well. That can then be left to dry. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, sand the drawers on all edges so that you get a nice flush piece. And you can do that by holding it against your sandpaper and going around in small circular motions. And do that top and bottom and on each side as well. And then dry the drawer into place. And if it's still a little bit tight, you can do a little bit more sanding. But do just do a little at a time, otherwise you might take too much off and then you'll have a lot of gapping around the edges. And we're now ready to fit the draw knobs. So begin by finding the centre of your draw front. Line that 
way and then turn it and find the centre along the height. Do a little dot like that and then you can erase the pencil line and your little dot will stay there. And then I'm using these little 2.5 millimetre turned knobs. So you want to choose a drill bit that is the thickness of the little stem at the back there. So drill your hole, support the drawer as you drill and don't push, push too hard as you may split through the drawer front. And then I always just give it a bit of a wiggle just to make that hole slightly larger. And then you can check that your little draw knob fits in. Yeah, that's a nice fit there. But I'm still going to use just a little tiny bit of glue just to make sure it's secure. So just dot a little bit over the hole. And glue the drawn up into place. Give it a good press so that it's actually sat flush with the draw front. And then you can remove any excess glue. So do the same with your remaining drawer. If you're going to add a draw knob into the central moulded area, find the centre lengthways and then come down as far as your draw knob so that you've got three even draw knobs along there. And then when you're drilling your hole, because that piece isn't supported, just be really careful and don't press too hard on your drill. And I think that central draw knob adds a really nice detail to the piece. This is now ready for paint and I'm using an emulsion paint and this is one that I mixed myself which is white mixed with a very very pale silvery grey. So the dressing table has had two coats of paint and I sanded lightly after each coat had completely dried. You may find that you need to re-sand the drawers to get them to fit back in but again just do a little bit of sanding at a time, try them back into place and then sand a little bit more if you need to. And there is the completed piece. And I'm really looking forward to trying this inside the doll's house. Now I'll be making a dressing table mirror and also a chair in the next episode of my doll's house diary. And also in that episode I'll make a few other accessories for the bedroom. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you do have a go at making this piece I'd love to see your photographs and you can share them in my Facebook group Little Bits and Pieces by You. If you're not already a member, you can request to join through my Facebook page, so I'll pop a link below. So that's it for today. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye!